for real, this makeup pisses me off. Y'all, it is my last video of 2021. May I vent? I was prepared to end the year with some positivity, you know, a celebration, year end favorites or something like this. But then I did a poll to ask my patrons what they would rather see, and it should come as no surprise to any of us that y'all chose a video of me being salty for 10 to 12 minutes. Now, let me just say up front, not all of these are even specific to 2021, but all of these things collectively have got my sphincter more crinkled than it has been in quite some time on today. Think of this as one of those what we're leaving behind in 2021 type of videos that the various booty gurus used to do. And I guess now's as good a time to mention as any that I ain't no damn guru. I am T, AKA nappy headed jojoba, not nappy, not jojoba, nappy headed jojoba. You have to say the whole thing. It's like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All right, let's get on with this. I am at my desk today, as you can see, which is a different setup to my usual, unless I'm doing a live stream, but I wanted to be able to look at these photos as I go through these things. And matter of fact, let me scoot over so I can pop them up on screen over here as we go through. Let the dragation begin. The Kaja stamp bronzers, highlighters, blushers. It seems to be an assortment of cheek products. And these look like cushion style products, but instead of having the round applicator, that kind of puff thing that tends to come with cushion products, they have these stamps and hearts and moons and stars and perhaps all of the Lucky Charms. I don't know, girl. Now I can't speak to the product's efficacy, you know, shade selection, longevity, blendability, pigmentation. Although the fact that these have been in the sales section of www.sephora.com for a hot ass minute leads me to think that I'm not the only one who felt that these were a hard pass. I'm sure some people really like these and think that they're really cute, but one woman's cute is another woman's juvenile. And I detest juvenile beauty products. It's one of the reasons I despise Too Faced, although it isn't the main reason. Anyway, I simply don't see the point of stamping crescent moons on my face just to have to blend them out. Like, what is the reason? I hate it. Next up, the NYX Brow Primer. Yeah, you heard me right. I said brow primer. This definitely did not come out this year. I remember first hearing about it quite some time ago. But for the love of Ray J, brow primer? I knew NYX got us fucked up if they thought we were gonna fall for this caper. At this point, I think most of us are well aware that the beauty industry is pretty well known for inventing new steps in makeup routines to create new products to sell us. Once upon a time, primer for your foundation wasn't even a thing. It was just called moisturizer. Since then, I do think the face primer game has evolved to do jobs that moisturize moisturizer alone cannot, you know, pore filling, mattifying, stuff like that. But make no mistake, outside of the ones that do do things like that, you know, blurring, pore filling, the rest of the ones on the market are dead ass, just some lotion. Eyeshadow primer, I can get with that too. Those of us with oily skins know what it's like to have your eyeshadow creasing before you've even left the house. But eyebrow primer, who asked for this? This was such a blatant attempt to trick people into adding an unnecessary step and more to the point, into buying an unnecessary product. Stupid, I hate it. The Becca Invisible Foundation. Remember this bullshit? I don't know if this was just a stunt to save the sinking ship that was Becca because we learned this year that they low key kinda sorta went out of business. I guess now they've had a stay of execution by becoming roommates with Smashbox on their Sephora gondola or whatever, I don't know girl. Point is, the Becca Zero Foundation or whatever it's called was the emperor's new clothes of makeup in the most blatant way I think I've ever seen. The gag is I actually didn't detest the concept when I first heard about it. Really, I thought they were just marketing a primer that would be suitable to wear with or without foundation on top. You know, I was thinking maybe it helped blur and smooth the skin like primers often do, but without leaving any of the cast or dullness or patchiness that typical primers of that type can sometimes do. You know, so you wouldn't need to cover it up with foundation afterward if you didn't want to. Seemed like a good idea, but nope, that's not. That's not what it was. Not only did it evidently do fuck all to improve your skin's appearance once applied, you also couldn't even use it as a primer underneath a coverage product instead. Because I remember the people who did try to use it that way got pilling or lifting or other application issues. So in the end, it was an expensive jar of nothing. I hate it. Bite Yay Sayer Lip Gloss. I don't have a whole lot to say about this, but you got me absolutely fucked up. If you think I'm gonna use some kind of jizz tip applicator in public every time my lips start feeling bit parched, mm -mm, not me like click, click, uh, nope, uh-uh. Bite, who approved this design? Because it is bad. 
Big yikes. I hate it. Magnetic lashes. Definitely not new. Definitely not a 2021 release. These things have actually been pissing me off for years now. Because I thought that these would have gone away by now. Like who uses these? I know that there must be some folks who do because I keep seeing them for sale. But is it people who just don't know any better? These shits don't work. I've tried them. Actually, hold on. There are two types. There's the ones with the magnets at the base of the lashes and there's like a top set and a bottom set and you kind of sandwich those around your natural lashes. That's the kind I tried. I did not buy them. Uh, I actually tried them for a job I was on. It was a beauty show that I was co-hosting and we did an episode we were trying out those magnetic lashes and they did not work. They sucked. Horrible product. But then there's also the other ones where there's like a magnetic eyeliner that you use and then you draw on the eyeliner and then the magnet on the lash sticks to the eyeliner on your eyeball. Girl, I don't know. My hunch is that the people buying magnetic lashes, whichever type, or the people who are just new to wearing eye weave and they're afraid, they, they feel like it'll be easier than getting just some regular degular lashes and some doggone glue. But I don't know a single lash wearer who actually uses these things. Where they at? And it's even more annoying to be at the Target or the Ulta or whatever, and then I'll see a cute lash style that I wanna try out and then realize, oh, it's magnetic. Get these Bush League magnetic lashes out of my face. They're cluttering up the aisle. I hate it. The NYX Money Heist Bar of Gold Highlighter. I hate this because it's a blatant ripoff and it's a blatant ripoff of old da, 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 makeup that was generally considered to be a flop in the first place. I'm talking about the Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold Highlighter, which was maybe in the second or third round of products after she first, first launched her brand. Like that's how old this is. This is like four or five years ago at least. I remember this highlighter because I was then, as I am now, a pretty big fan of Charlotte Tilbury's range. It's one of my favorite brands. LARPing as a wealthy white woman is how I transmute my rage, okay? Anyway, because I remember the OG bar of gold highlighter vividly, I remember the main complaints being that it wasn't very good. People said it was too glittery, not a very sophisticated formula, and two, that the packaging was cheap and Remember, this is a luxury brand, which means a luxury price tag. And since it just came in a cheap ass cardboard box, it was not giving what luxury makeup is supposed to have gave, not then and not now. Actually, I suppose for NYX, duping this product all the way down to the shoddy cardboard packaging makes better sense for them since they are at least a drugstore brand. But why? Are we duping dead makeup from five years ago? It's just weird. Even though they're trying to tie it in with the money heist show, like I get it, bar of gold money heist, I just feel like they shoulda and coulda come up with something better. I don't know, something original. I hate it. Huda. Huda has been on one with this Petri dish built ass makeup, starting with this mauve palette. I think it came out early this year, or maybe late 2020, I can't recall. The makeup nerds all know what I'm talking about. What the fuck? was this. I'm dreading even editing this video because I know I'm going to have to look at photos of that thing again and it's going to make me itch. Clearly, Huda and them did not get the message of just how many of us found that eyeshadow to be revolting because they did it again. I think there's a shade like it in her newest palette, the dusty one that just came out with all the pink, as well as, and this is the worst one of all, this giant version of it as a highlighter, which I believe was called COVID-21. <sighs> again, I'm sitting here dreading editing this, so let's move on so I can get this off the screen. I hate it. Jay-Z and his Basquiat cosplay. Some of y'all might be wondering why this is in here since up to this point, it's been all made makeup, but I consider weave to be part of the beauty space. I would love it if Mr. Z would leave this wig behind in 2021. We don't need to see it moving forward. I would super love to never see this again. I don't know if I've talked about this before on YouTube. I know I have on Instagram, but Basquiat is my favorite artist. He's a huge deal to me, major inspiration, major influence, all of these things. As far as my feelings about Jay-Z, let's just say that ether may or may not have been my ringtone at certain points in my life. If I am able to track down the Twitter thread where a young lady makes a point by point case as to how this is clearly a wig or a weave, I will link the thread in the D box. I may not even be able to track it down because I'm not on Twitter. So if I can't find it easily, uh, our lives will have to go on. The most important thing is that Jay-Z must be stopped. Put some respect on Basquiat's name and take off this costume. I hate it. That's it. I'm gonna end this here because I think that's a good list of things that I would love to see get left behind in 2020. 
2021. I'd just been keeping this list of things that were pissing me off. Not sure if I'd ever have anything to do with it. And what do you know? The patrons, they voted for the negativity. So let's hope that we leave not only these things behind, but really any other fuck shit that disrupts our peace. May we all have a healthy, happy, and abundant 2022. I will see y'all on the other side, but in what's left of this year, as well as in the year ahead, may we all stay safe, stay dangerous, and never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Happy 2022. That's a, that's a nappy headed hose there, I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs>